አምበሳው ሞተ ጎሹን ፈረጠጠ ዞር ሊገዛን ነው በግሩ ይረገጠ ሰላየን ሃዝ ዳይድ እንደ ባፋሎ ሃዝ ፍለድ ሶ ዊ ቮት ፎር ዘ ኤሌፋንት ቱ ትራምፕል አስ ኢንስቴድ The voice of the Ethiopian poet and activist Alemu Tebeji uh, reading in Amharic first a couplet from Songs We Learn from Trees which is the very first anthology of Ethiopian poetry to be published in English and Alemu who's here has edited and translated it together with Chris Beckett who's also here at a safe distance who spent his boyhood in Addis Ababa and speaks Amharic um so thank you both for coming in Chris just two lines there we heard them in Amharic and then in English but cryptic and stuffed with meaning please unpack them for us Yeah, thank you. Um it's it's one of these wonderful sort of key poems, isn't it? Um the lion uh, here represents Haile Selassie because his motto was the lion of Judah. Um the buffalo is the brutal military regime of the 1970s and 80s. Um uh because the foreign minister at that time was a man called Goshu which means buffalo um and then finally the elephant <laughs> which tramples them instead uh is the um authoritarian regime which replaced the 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 military regime in the 90s um but in fact as Alimu has explained it to me um this is really uh, you know any election uh in Ethiopia over the past uh, many many years where the the ruling party always wins um and, and a lot of Ethiopian Uh, poetry works like this you know um you don't give it a name but everybody knows what you're saying interesting well ethiopia holds a very special place in world culture it's said to be the home of the biblical queen of sheba certainly home of a jewish people an early christian society and the kingdom as you mentioned of haile selassie who holds special spiritual significance to the rastafarian community and ethiopia has a long tradition of literature dating back to 300 ad so alemu tell me about what's in the book the kinds of poems the book is an overview of amharic poems it contains poems from the past two centuries and divided into four sections the first section is for folk and religious poems the second section um is for the 20th century greats like kabeda mikael and gamorau the poets featured in this section are you can call them modern father of modern amharic poems poetry and the third and the fourth sections contains contemporary poets living in ethiopia and abroad most of these poets write in amharic but some also write in english like hamatuma liu lubsakal and probably the only familiar name in uk the wonderful lemon sise lemon sise of course um and chris what's the place of of poetry in ethiopian society well it's 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 good of you to ask that because basically poetry is is 100% mainstream in ethiopia it's a big big world um uh, a lot of the poets in our book are household names one of the poets when i was there last year uh, claimed that he'd uh, efrem sayum he's a wonderful poet he claimed he'd sold 45000 copies of his latest collection of poems <laughs> um which puts many of uh, of us to shame um and uh there's there's you know there's a, a big tradition of asmari minstrels um who perform at weddings etc but also there are uh, asmari bait asmari houses where the the minstrels um sing satirical couplets praising or making fun of people in the audience um and there's a, a really really strong tradition of religious poetry which is called kne uh and it's one of the specialty subjects it's uh, taught in church schools and it's very very influential on all poetry in Ethiopia fantastic well let's hear a a, a longer poem um alamu what have you chosen oh uh, this is just a nobody by hamatuma just a nobody the dead man was no one just a man in tattered clothes no shoes just a coin in his pocket no id cards no bus tickets he was a nobody dirty and skinny a no one a nobody who clenched his hand before he died but when they prayed pried his fingers open this nobody they found a whole country there's quite a a kind of bite in the end there it's very concise this combination of very simple seemingly simple lines and words and then this real depth is that how how ethiopian poetry really works yeah 
yes, the dead man's hand holds nothing, the whole, but the whole country is like that. It's a protest against poverty, hunger, oppression, forced exiles, and so on. But it suggests a possibility too. Fantastic. And Chris, we talked a little about um, the kind of different genres of poetry that are out there. But what about the varieties of form and, and subjects that you've yeah. collected in the anthology? Yeah, I mean, uh, we start with the, the folk poetry section and it's very clear that the, the, the basic of all Ethiopian poetry is really the rhyming couplet, it's called, um, uh, which is normally in Yowul Beit. Uh, which means the sort of average line, and it's 12 syllables with a pause in the middle, just like an Alexandrine in French poetry. Um, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's a rhyming couplet, and modern uh, poetry still rhymes, um, but it uses, it sort of goes, it, it, it uses the Yewel Beit line, the, the Alexandrine, as a sort of base, and then it, you know, goes away as far as it can and then comes back. Um, of course, we as translators with Alimu, we decided that we wouldn't, uh, try to follow the, the the syllable count or the rhyme schemes all the time, uh, except if it was really essential to capture the feeling of of a poem, because otherwise you end up with very awkward sounding English poems. And we really wanted to make sure that the poems that we're presenting here um, are really poems in English, as you know, not just and don't sound too much like translations. Now we've got a minute and a half left, so my instinct is to hear um, Alemu reading in Amharic and then Chris in English. Do you think we could fit that in? Yes. Go for it. Yeah, this is Badul Swagjiras and it's called Alam Atam Tablashing, which means what you say to me, you say to me, don't come. Atam Tablashing. Kanafsish Tamaktash, Karasish Tataltash, Hmam Nahablashing, Kalam Takarartash, Subaita Kamtash, Hatayat Adrgashing, Dejushing Kolfesh, Mabratshin Atfatash, Atam Tablashing, Tatabiking Yalash. Don't come is what you say to me when you're struggling with your soul and beating yourself up. You are the pain in me is what you say to me and tuck yourself away in a retreat and treat me like a sin. I'm locking my front door is what you say to me, switching off your lamp. Don't come is what you say to me, but then you sit there and I know you're just you're waiting just for me. So give me a line of interpretation to help us with that. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it. You know, it could be, uh, it could be just a, a lover waiting for, you know, um, waiting for his, uh, for his love, or it could be, you know, the the, the whole country um, waiting uh, for freedom, for example. It could be a much bigger poem, um, and that, uh, you know, uh, the country is locking itself away, um, or is it freedom locking itself away? Um, there's many ways you could read this poem. Um, it, if you're, uh, you know, reading it in the original, but uh, we're trying to make that um, discreet. And I think once you're reading the, 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 the book, you get the, the idea to look beyond what is just in front of you. And uh, briefly, obviously, there's a huge Ethiopian community in the UK. You'd had a reading tour planned. Um, what are you going to do instead? Are you going to do something Yeah, online? we've got a video tour, a, a virtual tour, which Carcanet has been organising. Um, we've got videos um, from six poets. Um, we're starting next Monday um, and uh, e ending with Lem Sise on Saturday and that's going to be on the Carcanet Press YouTube channel all week basically Fantastic. and they'll be sharing them on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank um, you. We'll have to leave it there, sadly. But thank you so much, Chris Beckett and Alemu uh, Tobeje. Songs We Learn From Trees um, is out now. Um, that's it from tonight. Um, tomorrow, um, the director of Amazon's new retro sci-fi film joined Tom at 7.15. Thank you for listening to Front Row. I'm Samira Ahmed and the producer was Jerome Weatherold. The studio manager was Tim Heffer and the production coordinator was Hilary Buchanan. If you enjoyed it, remember you can discover more radio music and podcasts on BBC Sounds.